Previously on Full Throttle Saloon. From angry bartenders. Balls and taller. And that's her damn. To stealing bartenders. She just stole it right there. Michael Ballard got the rally started with a bang. But it wasn't easy. And this is only day one. Coming up. It's the biggest gamble in Full Throttle history. Corn is by far the most expensive band that we've ever had at the Full Throttle. We're sweating bullets right now. I mean, we're still probably a thousand people shy of just breaking even. Red Rotten runs into trouble. Michael, uh, this is Red. Red is locked up downtown to county jail. Then. And it's like emergency, so I'm not the jelly belly. I could just see the whole 30 acres going up in flames. One week a year, the small town of Sturgis, South Dakota, welcomes half a million bikers. Welcome to Sturgis! And at the heart of the world's largest biker rally is the world's largest biker bar. It blows my mind that there is even a bar like this that exists. This is the Full Throttle Saloon. It's day two of the rally, and after only a couple hours of sleep, Angie's back to the grind. Disappointed by slow sales on night one, she and Michael have decided to reshuffle the 80 bartenders that man the throttle's 60 cash registers. Are you wondering where your spot is? Yeah. It's this bar right okay. here, right up front. On a big night, a good bartender in a busy section can take in three to $5,000 for the boss and a thousand in tips for themselves. Do you know how to serve liquor? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get you some liquor then. I don't know what their potential is until I can see them work. And so that's where the switching comes in. We're keeping her at eight. I put them on a station. If it's just not matching their personality or their get up and go or their hustle, then I gotta move them to a different spot. You have to, it has to be up to you how much money you make. Meanwhile, Michael Ballard starts day two already behind last year's pace. We gotta do 30,000 on day shift today in order to make up. He needs to play catch up to keep the throttle open for business. You never make up for what you lose, but hopefully we can make a little bit of extra money tonight. We have a decent night tonight and try to come out. Southern rock first? band Molly Hatchett has drawn okay, big crowds you. in Sturgis over the years. Michael hopes they can do it again. You know, we got Molly Hatchet tonight. It's Sunday night. I'm hoping we have a decent night tonight. By midday, the crowd starts to build. But so do the problems. There's a bartender out there that has a bar back that works for One Eye Jacks at night and is recruiting our bartenders to go down and work as dancers at One Eye Jacks. All right. They call in the bartender to find out more about the poacher. I wasn't trying to be a tattletale or anything. He's like, with those big tits, you should totally go to work for One Eye Jacks and be a stripper. And so I said, no, it's, I'm not a stripper. I said, I'm in sales. That's what I do for a living every day. I'm yeah. in sales. I'm not going to be a stripper. Do you want me to go get him and bring him in no, here? No, I want you to find somebody to cover a spot. I already got him. That bar back pissed me off. Whoa. Whether you're stealing people from us or you're stealing Michael's money, stealing is stealing. Hey, you know where a guy named Levi is, a bar back? Yeah, he's working these bars up this way. I'm going to confront him on, on what I'm hearing. Hey, buddy. You need to come to the office with me. Hey, so what's the deal with you recruiting my bartenders about being strippers downtown? I've done what? Got, yeah. You tell them that they can go downtown, they need to go down there and be strippers no, no, at One no, Eye Jacks. No, no, no. Can go down there and make more money being strippers at One Eye Jacks than they can work yeah, in here. Mike, that's not true. I wouldn't know. I don't know, that's, what I, that's what's happened. I mean, I believe these girls, there's two of them telling me that story. I mean, I wouldn't, like I said, if it's one, I'd understand it, but two, I don't. No, yeah. Man, I, yeah, I, 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 I just somewhere. rather just clock out and let's call it, okay? We're just, I mean, I'm not, I don't need that. Going on. I don't. I mean, I, this is a ten million dollar business. Last thing I need to do is we go bust our ass to hire people and yeah. let's so, just clock out. It, and it, call it is it. what it is. So yeah, let's just, let's just clock, clock out. out and call it. Okay. Recruiting right. bartenders from the full throttle always gets a swift reaction. The bar back is escorted off the premises by security. I need the shirt back. After he returns all his throttle property. 
I came to work here from One Eye Jacks. I wouldn't recruit people to go down there. But oh well, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's a rally. Arrested again. Uh, I still have more week. I want to see if he's signed for my bond. I don't want to get out here. So Red's locked up. Time. How in the world did he get locked up in the damn jail? My name's Red, and you watch me go. Give it up out there. Red's a really good guy when he's straight and sober and he's not on anything, but he, he's always into trouble. He's always in jail. I think for the past nine years, he has went to jail every single freaking year during a rally. So it wasn't much of a surprise to find out he's back in jail again. Rhett's picked up his second DUI in two nights and won't be able to perform tonight. He always falls off the wagon. It's kind of like putting somebody with a gambling problem, dropping them off in the middle of Las Vegas. He gets to the, to the full throttle. There's women and liquor and who knows what else is flying around during a rally, and he dives right in the middle of it. Rhett needs $10,000 bail and someone with a lot of trust in him. I can't afford to risk the $10,000 because the guy goes to jail every year. Now, I don't trust him actually showing up to court uh, at this point and me losing. I don't want to lose that 10 grand. Can't afford it. I said, Mike? Yes, nice, nice to meet you. Very good, sir. I said I would come out here and talk to you and vouch for him. How do you get two to you? How do you he got it. He bonded out and got picked up again the next day. Red. He, he's just a mess. He has the market cornered on what he does, and he still chooses to be a up. Willing to pay the thousand, but he's wanting me to sign a deal for two the, grand. They, but... they won't. I I have put up. I would put up my house for this kid. Right. But I can't do that. Laws prevent it. I really like Rhett. He was so out of control last year. He was literally going down in the cabin area and taking a shower and walking out in where everybody's eating naked. I like him as a person, but I, from a business standpoint, yeah, from my business standpoint, I don't feel comfortable putting up $10,000. Okay. Thank All right. you. Thanks. All okay. right. All right, Susan. Thank I'm really soft-hearted when it comes to trying to help people and give people a second chance and a third chance. I can't take that gamble of losing $10,000. How are you, sir? It's Gary. Hi. Nice to meet you. A national magazine is running a promotion at the throttle and wants to stage a best butt contest, one that will push the limits on nudity. So uh, here's what's happening. Yesterday, we went out and uh, did a little investigation okay. across the street. They've got pasties. They do? So I don't want to do that. What they're doing, according to the ordinance, is totally wrong. If you're breaking the ordinances, you could lose your liquor license. Without that liquor license, he doesn't have a business, he doesn't make any money, he loses everything. Since Michael has his hands full today, he deputizes his MC, Goat, to police the best butt competition. Yeah. Hey, Goat, listen to me for a quick second. I need you to oversee that infield. I understand that. I want you to be like me if this was your liquor license from your damn bar down there. If you see nudity, shut it the f down. Just shut it down. Later. But as the contest begins, it's clear the rules are going to be tough to follow. Coming up. Hey, Mike. Time to rock and roll. It's the biggest gamble in full throttle history. Let's go. A concert by the band Korn will either be a huge money maker. Let's see, one, two, three. Hell, that's sixty dollars worth of beer right there. Or a huge headache. In the next forty minutes, we might sell a thousand tickets to break even. And later, things are already spiraling out of control. This ain't TV. I'm done. Go, come here. What happened? Take me off the camera. I'm not Go. What's here. wrong? And if Michael can't shut down the nudity. I gotta be crystal. No. Shut it down. The full throttle could be closed for good. It's Sunday afternoon at the full throttle. Owner Michael Ballard is out back, focusing on tonight's Molly Hatchet concert. Inside the bar, 
the best butt contest is just getting going. Michael gets a call that the contest has crossed the line on nudity. Couldn't find Goat. I don't know where he was at. He back in the bunkhouse cracking a beer open. I don't know. But it was also Steve's responsibility, so I have to go over there and shut it down. Steve! You might feel Steve! Okay. Is it gonna be a school teacher? I'm supposed to have this shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna have to cut it off because I'm not losing a half a million dollars. I can't lose that liquor license over there. I shut it down. In case the commissioners come with any I just shut it down. I'm not even going to roll the dice whatsoever on my liquor license or my beer license because that'll bankrupt me. What the hell am I going to sell if I don't have beer and liquor? I'm out of business. Yeah. Meanwhile, a customer tells Angie that a bartender might be beating the system. Yep, right here. This is Wild Turkey. I want you to watch this camera a little bit tonight, OK? Can you zoom in on both those tills? A customer come up and, and said that they, it, well, I don't know if it's this girl or this girl, but they said that they gave her the money for a beer and she okay. hit no sale instead of the beer key. All right. To like make it look like she opened the door. All I don't right. know how long ago that happened. Well, we'll put the heat on her tonight. Yeah. Moments later, Angie's got another emergency to deal with. This is Angie. The girl in the black bikini on the front of the bar has no fire. Are you sure you're like that? Are you up there right now? In the front of the bar. Oh, okay, okay. We had some girls come in with flyers soliciting for another business, which is just absurd to me. I don't send my good looking girls over to any of the other establishments to grab their customers to come over here. If I catch you guys okay. even saying a word to someone, I'm going to have him escort you off the property. are a popular and profitable item at the throttle. Many employees and guests try to finagle a free one, which costs Michael money. This year, he's laying down the law early. You're gonna get bands coming in here. That's gonna be like, Michael said I could come get shirts, and Michael said that unless I come in here and, all, and walk them through what they're gonna get, then nobody gets to say, hey, we can't do it. I, I don't want to get the away. Okay. No more Michael said, Angie said, Vicky said, Mama said. Unless I come in here, walk them through, give them some stuff. They don't go out. All right, thank well, don't you. Me. Oh, I know. I know. Thank you. 30 minutes after she first approached them, Angie learns the flyer girls are still hanging around. Okay, you guys are still around. No, honestly, no. Why did you mean they said, can you go past now? I did feel a little bit sorry for those girls because I don't think they knew what they were getting into when they said, yeah, I'll go hand these flyers out. Get off my property. Okay, we'll go. Basically, what, what happens in a situation like that is I just get them off my property. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's really no second chances. We hold ourselves to a higher standard. We don't have to go to other businesses and solicit for customers because they just come here. Let's see what the highway looks like. Not good. <laughs> no. I remember when you had to wait two, three hours in line <laughs> to get in here. They ain't supposed to park no bikes in there. We don't take that, put that fence up once. Go! Go! We ought to move now. 
No, that guy, is that guy, is that guy letting bikes? Get your shirt back and I'm done. What's wrong with you? I'm done. What happened? Done. I'm what happened? I'm seriously Come this here. This ain't TV I'm done. Tell me what happened. No. Go, come here. What happened? Take me off the camera. I'm not Go, on. Go, what's seriously. wrong? Coming up, Molly Hatchet takes the stage. But a backstage fire threatens the packed house. Oh, you need to move them bikes out of there. And Michael sees his profits go down the drain. It's this one right here, ain't it? She actually takes the top off the bottle. And later, the rush is on to build the stage for the Full Throttle's biggest concert ever. We don't get these damn bars right. up. We're going to end up with our ass in a swing. It's day two of the rally. And instead of focusing on profits, Michael's been distracted by problems. I just shut it down. The latest is Goat, a vital part of the team who just quit. What's wrong with you? I'm done. What happened? I'm done. Tell me what happened. Oh. He don't even tell you what happened. Uh, Go, come here. What happened? This place, Michael. Tell me what happened to you. Every year he really gets upset at the beginning of the rally. He quit without even telling me what's going on. He won't even talk to nobody. <laughs> something about stealing the shirt. I didn't say nothing about him stealing the shirt. I just told that girl not to let anybody else out with any more shirts without them paying for it. Uh, so tell me what, what why no, you say that. sister just calls me up and says, Michael says that you stole a shirt from That's us. That's not true. No, I'm not her. saying that she said that. She I'm called saying... her and she says, if you ever take another shirt from us again, I will fire you and kick you off these premises. I have never stolen a no, I, I, what, here's what happened. I said, you're going to get hit with bands that come right. in here. Dude. They're going to say, Michael said I could have That's shirts. They're going to get coats. They're going to get all this bunch of That's stuff. That's what happened last year. And so she was a new girl. She didn't know. And right. I, that's all that's been said. Right. And somehow it sounds like to me, from her down the line, it got into something stupid. I'll go down and take care of that situation. You're fine. It's all right? All right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> drama. Once I got him in the room and explained to him what happened, then he was okay with it. But he quits every year. I don't know if that's the excuse so he could drink and party the rest of the week or what the hell it is. It's a respect thing, and it's just, I don't get it, and I know I deserve it. I get pissed off. I'm just like, I can't do it no more. Goat's a good old dude, you know. He's one of them guys, too, that he likes to laugh all the time and have fun all the time, and it's real hard to get him on the serious side of things. And, uh, he kind of gets his feelings hurt sometimes when it has to get to the serious side of things, you know? You just quit pre-rally. <laughs> City says the rally don't start till today. <laughs>
got a text message from uh, my security guy. He had some girls on film taking the posi pours off and free pouring. Uh, is this one right here, Anna? Yeah. I was up there watching her earlier just for a few minutes. I didn't trust it happened. Watch this now. She actually takes the top off the bottle. Okay, what what is it? Oh, oh, really? Right there, she just takes the top off. Just one I'm This one right here, the short hair one? Yeah. What's up with that deal with that liquor? I swear to you, I'm not double shot in any Well, I seen you pull the top off one and I pour know, it. I couldn't get, I got it like six times. They got you several times on that camera doing multiple things like that with that all night long. I just went in there and looked at it while ago. Yeah, and because it was pouring like a pinch every time. Because she had problems with her stitching and... Well, and you need to not... let Byron know you need some new posi pours, okay? Sorry about that's that. all right. I that's, that's all right. I need this job. I, I don't need to lose it. And so, yeah, it's like, that sucks. They said that the posi pours were jamming up and sticky and it wasn't working right. So uh, I had my guy go up, pull the posi pours off, put all new ones on it. But anyway, even when he brought them down, some of them were new ones. And, and I, I know that they were doing it on purpose. Like, I'd like to see them write a check for, uh, for around $250,000 to stock their bar and then let me stand out there behind their bar and give their liquor away for free. That's the part that really, really pisses me off. Michael checks in on fast food concessions and his man in charge, Fajita Mike. Reports are in that on the first night, Fajita ran out of food, forgetting he had $20,000 of stock in the freezer. And to top it off, his sales totals don't match the inventory he did have. I like Fajita a lot. I think he's loyal to the throttle, but at the end of the day, there's some things that's been happening that's not correct when it comes to the way that I do business. Fajita he has no respect for anyone. I'd rather sit next to a, a stinky bum that his pants than be around Fajita right now. I wish Michael would have just fired him like two years ago. I know that there's been some food given away back there to other people and he's all about partying too. Like him getting drunk and being up and causing trouble all the time. I imagine that this will be the last year we have him back. To come to full throttle and to see these guys light up, that means a lot to us. We're going to play our guts out for them, man. So for what reason why you're here tonight? In the surveillance room, Michael has his eyes on the employees. Then, a startling call over the walkies. Hey, go ahead and inspect Tom. Because he just turned the light on and turned the hole on fire back here, backstage gate. What happened? Somebody set a phone on fire? Something. I'm at the office. I'll see if they can raise him on the phone. And it's like an emergency, Tom, not the dilly dally. Well, the emergency flames. You got a little one? Hold it. It's right at the back door. Back gate. Back gate. Somebody just called me. Hey, you need to move them bikes out of there. Roll them motorcycles out of the way. Coming up. I don't even think our beer company's here yet. The floodgates open. The crowd is hungry for corn and thirsty for beer. And it's costing them money the longer we're standing here. It's unbelievable. It's night two of the rally, and Michael Ballard's investment, the band Molly Hatchet, is paying off in beer sales. Things are looking up until he gets a call that a fire's broken out on top of a light tower just yards away from the stage. Hey, you need to move them bikes out of there. Roll them motorcycles out of the way. I get a call on the radio, there's a fire. It's close to the main stage, the property's packed, it's, it's nighttime, we're jamming. Throw the breaker on the 
the first thing that runs through my head is it's going to catch hold. It's going to uh, go into the whole, I could just see the whole 30 acres going up in flames. No, where's it at? Where is it? They already got it. They got it. Did it go out? Did it, where did they find the switch for that? It's right over here. I'm sure these people seen any kind of fire, they're gonna take off running. And I can see us losing that whole night's worth of income. Yeah, them are some bright lights. Hell yeah, they are. That scared me a lot that this whole property might just go up. That's the second fire of the week, and we're just getting started. It should cool down now. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll be fine now. for Michael is Molly Hatchet packed the house. The bad news, no one wants to go home. Start pushing these people out on the mic. Local laws require him to have everyone out of the bar by 2 a.m. with no alcohol in hand. It's not just customers. There's no selling liquor. There's no drinking liquor. There's no nothing after 2 o'clock or you're done. All right, let's go. We're going to start heading out. Start heading out. Drink your beers. We got to f*** up. Are you still spending drinks? I got sir. You gotta throw your drinks away. Right here. Last call means last call. After the crowd is gone, Angie, Jesse, and Michael take care of some family business. Check us out. Sadly, this year, a brother in arms, German Mike, lost his life to a heart attack. German Mike was one of my real close friends and passed away at my house actually in Tennessee in January. He was really close to Angie and I both. Pretty amazing, huh? They done a good job on it, didn't they? Look here, his American flag in the background. He loved America, man. He's an awesome dude. Mike and, and German especially had a bond with each other and, uh, and that was apparent to everyone around and they really, really connected. Michael and Jesse honor their old friend by placing his ashes at his favorite spot in the bar, a spot that will forever bear his name. Probably the, one of the hardest hits, if not, if, if not the hardest hit I've ever seen Mike Ballard emotionally, was the day he lost German Mike. There's German. He said, I want to be in the, if I, if I die, I want to be in the rafters to watch over the place. That's what he said. He's happy now. We miss him a lot. He's got his own bar now at, at the full throttle, so he's, he's going to be here forever. Coming up, one big night is over, but an even bigger challenge is on the way. we got three hours, and I'm telling you, they don't even have the first building put in place. The band Corn is coming to the full throttle. What's up, Corn's here. We're about to rock the house at Sturges. And Michael and Jesse race against the clock to build a new concert venue. Yeah, I know Mike's cool headed about four hours, but I'm telling you, if we don't get these damn That's bars fine. and stuff, we're going to end up with our ass in a f***ing swing. Gotcha. Right. And when things don't go as planned, <laughs> Michael calls in the flop girls. <laughs> it's day three of the rally. Jackal frontman and full throttle partner Jesse James Dupree is overseeing the riskiest venture in the Throttle's history, a massive concert featuring the band Corn. Mike Ballard's nowhere to be seen. We've got just a ton of things that we're gonna need to put into place. I think it's best to go wake him up. Hey, Mike, time to rock and roll. To accommodate Corn, Jesse's plan is to bring in a giant portable stage on the field behind the saloon. The only problem, on a day where every minute counts, stage is over three hours late. So much of what is going to happen today it falls on Mike's shoulders because he knows where he wants his bars and all that kind of stuff. Wake up, Angie. Ah! Hey, Mike, wake up. 
Didn't get hardly any sleep last night, of course. It's like a nonstop freaking gangbusters around here. You need another check too, don't you? Today's the biggest day of the rally we're gonna have. We got corn tonight. I think we're gonna, we're gonna pull it off. It'll be a pressure-filled day to get the venue up and running. And Michael has a lot riding on its success. The night with Corn is, is by far the most expensive band that we've ever had at the Full Throttle. This is going to be a really high-end gamble for us, but it's a lot of pressure having this kind of an expense on our backs uh, and, and knowing if we're going to come out or not. To come out on top, Michael needs to sell at least 5,000 tickets, and that's not going to be easy. I feel good about it. We had pretty decent advance ticket sales, and if if uh, if our walk up is what it should be, you know, hopefully we're going to be okay on it. I think that white, the white tractor trailer rig is probably him. Everything went smooth on my end as far as the production and such, with the exception of the stage that all the production has to be set up on. It shows up over three hours late because it was detained at a way station on the outskirts of South Dakota. I'd say let's drop that, drop the front of the stage to be about right here. What do you think? Does that work for you, Dale? Yeah. Well, it also, we got our power run, so it's really, a, it's a matter of... If we put the front of the stage here, you can get that. Okay, well then let's do that then. And the race against the clock begins. Everyone is banking on tonight's corn concert to help make the rally a financial success but there's still a lot to be done. And it could weigh a lot on mine and Jesse's relationship because this is by far the biggest business venture that he and I have both been in together uh, with this kind of financial risk. I ain't being negative, dude, but I'm telling you, if those damn bars and the merch stuff is set up by the time gates open, it's gonna be a miracle. Watch. Huh? I'm watching, but I'm just telling you, it's just not happening. This is the calm before the storm right here is what this is, because Mike has said, I've got it, I got it, I got it. You're going to see some asses on fire. <laughs> we got three hours, and I'm telling you, they don't even have the first <laughs> only put in place. What time is it? It's only two. And the beer's here on the property? The beer's on its way right now in a semi-truck. <laughs> I've called him four times about getting the bars into place and get the ice and the phone lines for the credit cards and the box office. I mean, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah, I know Mike's cool headed about four hours, but I'm telling you, if we don't get these damn That's bars and stuff, we're going to end up with our ass in a <laughs> sling. Gotcha. Right. Let's go. Hey, fellas, y'all have to help us pull this grid out of here. We'll get two more tables before they all disappear for merch. With Jesse's crew feverishly trying to get merchandising set up, the Throttle's biggest investment has just arrived. The Grammy Award-winning band, Korn. Korn is not a, really a, a, a biker band. We're actually focused on the younger crowd and, and the locals that are going to come in. Whatever bikers come, that's just extra for us. Man, I'm glad to have you here, dude. It's so you got cool. you have fun. You have the, the coolest crowd here, man. You're, it's so cool. I've yeah. never been to Sturgis. It's really <laughs> cool. Well, enjoy stuff. You know, Come right to the backstage. We'll start unloading that right when you get here, okay? Amid all the corn hysteria, the staff has forgotten to prepare lunch for their star guests. The issues I'm dealing with corn today, I'm trying to scramble last second, get their hospitality, everything that was on that list that you and I looked at. So that's coming. Sorry it's taking so long. It's just, it should have been ready for them as soon as they unloaded the bus. Yeah, but I'm no, no. done. I know. Thanks. I thought someone else was handling it and I'm handling it the best I can. I hate that. Makes me look like I can't do my job. Coming to Sturgis is different than walking into a civic center and putting on a show. It's a temporary setup. When you get a band that's used to just beautiful dressing rooms, catered with limos, this is a total opposite of anything like that whatsoever. Not only was lunch late. Hey, uh, where uh, where are we at with getting the lunch out here to this corn show? The dressing rooms needed work too. Got it. We got to get this dressing room cleaned out. What kind of impression does that make? I'm trying to make a good impression, and this is the first thing she sees. And I've always been on the other side of the, the play when I'm out on tour with my band Jackal. You know, I'm on the other end. I'm making all the demands. I'm wanting my rider filled and all that kind of stuff. It's interesting to be on this side, but I mean, we've done it enough now that we've kind of got it into a groove and make everybody happy. Hey, we got electricity right here yet? How long? Hey, any of y'all using credit cards? We need some beer. And I some got the ice. When it hits, we'll just And another the bar to put. An S10 truck, too, if I hear truck. We're an hour away from this stuff getting going. Well, we can let them in in two seconds. I've got cash coming right here. We've got a ticket booth. Cut it off out there. I need you to stand right up in here. Tell them to have their IDs out and get them in a line. We got we got a line here. We got a line here. 
five minutes till Gates. <laughs> Mike, we got five minutes. We got it. Gates are opening in three minutes. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and open gates. Hopefully, the beer trucks will show up and the ice and the the barbacks will get it in the coolers and the bartenders will get the cash registers program. I mean, that's just. I mean, right now it's a wing and a prayer as far as we might have it together by the time corn finishes their encore. Uh, we're opening doors here. Here, hold on, you gotta check, check their IDs. Some of the guys that are checking IDs are having a hard time with the math of what makes someone 18 or 21. If they're 91, that means they're 18, so they get an X. And if they're 88, that means they're 21, they get a wristband. So I'm just trying to get that sorted out to make sure that we stay within the limits of the law. They finally got the gates open. But with no alcohol sales, Michael's dreams of covering his expenses are going to go up in a cloud of dust. Right now, all of the customers are waiting for something, and it's costing them money the longer we're standing here. We don't have any beer in there to sell these people that are lined up. They're lined up clean down to the road. I can't get them in the gate fast enough. I'm just now getting enough help. We're losing money for not selling beer, you know? There still aren't enough bars or bartenders to serve it. They're bringing a register over for you now. I'm gonna get one of you to go over here and another one in that. Just set up one whole bar real quick. <laughs> Better preparation could have prevented some of it because if we don't make the money on the gate, the ticket sales, we gotta make it on the bar. And if we don't get these people drinks in their hands, then we can't make it. They're already pre-programmed. They're already programmed. Ready to go, all right? With the crowd growing more restless, Michael makes a last-minute call to his tried-and-true solution, the ladies of flaunt. Come on, make some noise! They're beautiful. They're naughty. They're a little bit nice. Put your hands together for the beautiful girls of Flaunt. Flaunt is not just a business to me. It's my whole heart and soul. The atmosphere and the energy and and everything that's happening there just it, it gives you just that extra oomph to, to get out there on that stage. Coming up. Great, it is bikes everywhere. Michael and Jesse will find out if the biggest gamble in full throttle history pays off. Maybe we can at least get out of here with just a bruise and not an open wound. Michael has fronted more money for the corn concert than any other in the history of the throttle. If the gamble pays off, it could guarantee him a successful rally. However, low ticket sales could break the full throttle. We're sweating bullets right now. I mean, they're coming in pretty steady. We're still probably a 1,000 people shy of just breaking even. And I think we're running out of parking, which is making them come in even slower. Hell, the show must go on. If the people don't show up tonight and get by these tickets and our, and our alcohol sales are not through the roof, I don't think we'll be able to make up them dollar figures over the rest of this week. Rough calculations show that we're at 3,081 people. What? No way. According to these numbers, look. That's wrong. <laughs> bullet. I ain't hey. look. Michael knows he needs 5,000 paying customers to break even, or else he'll be in the hole for the rest of the rally. How you doing? Hi. What's your ticket number, honey? 235. 235. 234 tickets. That's what I just said. In the next 40 minutes, we might sell 1,000 tickets to break even. I hope the bottom falls out so we can collect that 180,000 in rain insurance, is what I'm saying. Give me a gun, a shot of whiskey, and a pistol, and I'll be fine. You got your ID? <laughs> I hope they drink a lot. Maybe that'll balance it out. Maybe we can at least get out of here with just a bruise and not an open wound. They're still coming in the door, though. Look at that. I mean, they're still racked up at the front. The lines are down, so maybe they'll drink more. 
Uh, I hope we make some money. I was kind of banking on this one. We got 30 minutes. I don't see the big greenbacks on this one, though. I don't know, but there's more than 3,000 people here. Hey, how you guys doing? We're good. You doing all right? How you guys doing? We just got Coke. Very excited. They had a beer? Getting close. They got another truck coming up here? Yeah, they're on the way right now with it. We got to get Bud and Bud Lights. He's out. Let's get it over here. Six bucks a beer. We're killing it. Let's see, one, two, three. Hell, that's sixty dollars worth of beer right there. What's up, Corns? Here, we're about to rock the house at Sturgis. It's pretty chaotic. Uh, we're about to hit the stage right now, so hope you all enjoy. Final ticket sales are in, and Michael is about to find out where they stand. There's 30, 3,452 people. Damn, that's us. Without Mike's money, 37. Yeah, 123, 400. That right there will cover uh, the band and, and the sound and lights. Good thing we had the alcohol. We're, we're, at a, we're at about it. We should be close to a break even. There's nothing funny about tonight. After that show, disappointment was written all over their faces. That's how rally is. That's how this, this whole game is played. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Can we get somebody in the PA to say, go on the full throttle? Mason can do it. Tell somebody to make an announcement that the full throttle saloon is open and the bands are still playing inside. Oh, my bad. That's all right. All right, thanks. But yeah, she's in a bar working on it. Full throttle saloon is still open. Please make your way inside. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Excitement. Mr. Excitement's what they call that fella. <sighs> we did 37 532 today, and that doesn't include a couple of the day shifts. Corn concert. We didn't make near what we wanted to make. We were hoping to put about 20 a piece in our pocket and it's going on maybe five. I don't know what the reason was, but I sure would have figured that that would have been a bigger show. We'll get them next time. Next time on Full Throttle Saloon. <laughs> Attendance is still down, and everyone is on edge. <laughs> and just when it couldn't get any worse. Son of a <laughs> A storm hits Sturgis. The rain just totally devastated his whole item. Then Angie and Michael face off behind closed doors. One of these days when you get a business, you will realize how to run a business. Threatening to tear the throttle apart for good. We'll get through this year, and I'm, gonna, I'm probably not going to have that situation next year. Is this the end of the flaunt girls? I'm tired of flaunt. <laughs>